Bob, welcome. It's great to have you. Um, yeah, the stock reaction, I assume, is just a function of good volumes, uh, but you got to invest a lot to keep up with uh, the environment we're in. Yeah, good morning. It's great to be with you today. You know, we had a record year in 2021 at C.H. Robinson and a, and a great fourth quarter. And I think it's a testament to our people and the investments that we've made and our ability to really serve, you know, over 100,000 customers through the supply chain disruption over the course of, of the past year. You know, to your point, in order to prepare ourselves for future growth, we need to continue to invest. And we did that in fourth quarter. We invested both in additional people to strengthen our team around the globe, as well as continue to invest in our technology so we can create this true digital marketplace for our customers and our carriers to participate in. When do you think either the investing cycle uh, begins to diminish a bit or the comps year on year just gets so, uh, so much easier that you get some relief on a, on a year on year basis? Well, we had really strong revenue growth and adjusted gross profit growth and EPS growth throughout the course of this year. So our comparisons as we go into 2022 are certainly, you know, there's not an easy comp in, in sight as we look at next year, but we're very confident in terms of the trajectory of our business, the expectation of, of delivery of value from the investments that we've made close in, in technology, in our people. So we do see growth in our future at an enterprise level. Bob, I am curious about the technology piece of the puzzle, especially as we do talk about things like labor shortages. I mean, today you've got Union Pacific announcing uh, a partnership with Too Simple for autonomous trucking. I know your company is working on something called Navisphere right now as well. How does the landscape continue to change and shift and evolve, and what does it mean for C.H. Robinson? Well, I think everybody's experienced over the course of the last couple of years the disruption that's occurred, whether that be in the global side of things, ocean and air shipping, or here domestically with trucking. And there are a lot of headwinds that we all face in the shipping industry, whether that is labor, whether that's availability of capacity. And we believe that the future of supply chain is purely, is truly much more digital. And it's going to take investment into that digital strategy so we can have better information, so we can make better planning decisions on behalf of our customers, so we can capture and unlock capacity that's locked in the network today. You know, there was some conversation with one of your guests earlier about the inefficiencies of trucking in the spot market. And the reality is that 20% or more of all of the miles are driven by truckers are empty. And so through technology and through better matching and better algorithmic approaches to digital marketplaces, we can unlock a tremendous amount of capacity through the existing suite of carriers and drivers that are out there today. Yeah, given how tight the freight market has been, I mean, pricing has been resilient. It's been strong. Uh, how long does that continue? And I guess just as importantly, as we talk about some of these technological investments, at what point does that begin to put downward pressure on pricing? Yeah, in 2021, we saw, you know, the rate of change of price increases in trucking continue to moderate throughout the course of the year, albeit even in the fourth quarter, we finished with our pricing increasing over 18 percent. You know, as we look forward into 2022, we expect that to further moderate. We expect price increases in, in domestic trucking to be more in the low to mid single digit range. So we don't see necessarily a, a rapid decline in, in cost, but certainly a moderation, which will allow all of us to plan a little bit more effectively for our businesses.